What a weekend for the LA Kings who made one trade and may be on the verge of another. We react on this episode of Locked on LA Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love for you to leave us a positive comment on Apple Podcasts if you're a fan of the show. And we're also on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. At last check, we were at 1,887 subscribers as we continue our steady march towards 2,000 subscribers. Thank you to all who have taken the time to have liked and subscribed the YouTube channel. And thank you to all who listen on the podcast as well. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked on LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. I'm also co-host of the Puck Podcast. It's a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 16 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for 30 years. Hope you had a great weekend. Coming up on today's show, we're going to talk about all the smoke coming out of Winnipeg and a possible Pierre-Luc Dubois trade with the LA Kings. Um, that's coming up. What's the latest on that developing story? Um, and also what LA Kings players could be involved if there is in fact a trade for Pierre-Luc Dubois. But first, the LA Kings did make a trade over the weekend as they shipped out 24-year-old defenseman Sean Dersey to the Arizona Coyotes for a second round pick in 2024. Now, if you've been paying attention to this show, I'm sure that move is not a big surprise. I know that there is a segment of fans who kind of fall in love, so to speak, with a player who they've seen join the Kings and seen them develop into an NHL player, and they get to know him, they get to like him, and some of those fans might not be happy today, and I get that. Sean Dersey is a young, improving offensive defenseman who's solid in most areas of his game. Yes, he can make occasional mistakes, and he does need to improve on that going forward, but He's likely, I think, at some point, a solid second-pairing defenseman who can be an asset on your power play as well. I think he's a good player. I think he was a good teammate, and I think that he should have a pretty nice NHL career ahead of him. That said, he was expendable. That's just the facts. The Kings have two younger, cheaper players that likely can give them what Sean Dersey gave them, and maybe more. Brant Clark, the team's first-round pick, eighth overall in 2021, looks to be NHL ready now. And Jordan Spence, fourth-round pick in 2019, who's been developing in the AHL, is not far behind. Both are offensive defensemen. Both are above average in skill level. Both can run a power play unit. So again, they can do what Sean Dersey has been doing for the Kings. What Clark and Spence don't have, of course, at this point is some NHL experience, which Dersey had a bit more of. Clark's only played in nine NHL games. Spence has played in 30, and that was mostly in the 2021-22 season. Late in the year, he played 24 games because of some injuries on the Kings' blue line. That said, they aren't exactly replacing a guy who's been in the league for five or six years. So again, Sean Dersey, I think his spot is fairly easily replaceable for the LA Kings. And again, it's not an indictment on Sean Dersey as a person or a player, but in the end, he was a piece that was expendable the kings had other pieces ready to take his place and that's what they've done now the kings got a second round pick in next year's draft in return and that might not sound like much for a legitimate nhl player who has some upside and if the trade had been with a better team then i might have expected a little bit more but arizona isn't expected to be good anytime soon including next season And so that pick will likely be in the top 10 to 15 picks of round number two. So that's a pretty fair return for Sean Dersey. Bottom line for me, I like the trade for the Kings. It made too much sense not to do it. The Kings, again, have now made room for other players that are ready to play at the NHL level, saved a little cap space, and got a decent return as well. One last time, again, Sean Dersey, think he's a good player, good teammate. I do honestly wish him well. And this may be the best thing for him in Arizona, as uh, they're probably, like we, like we said, they're, Brant Clark is a guy who's going to command some ice time. If Dersey were to stay, yeah, it's possible they could have moved him over to the left side or maybe had him be like the seventh defenseman. But in the end, he's probably going to a team where he's going to get to play a little bit more, uh, be relied on to have a little bit more of a role. And, and it probably be, will, will be the best thing for both sides involved. So 
we close the book on Sean Dursey as an LA King. Um, he was a former second round pick of Toronto acquired by the LA Kings and the Jake Muzzin trade, along with Carl Grundstrom and a first round pick that eventually became Tobias Bjornfoot. Um, Dursey has played the last two seasons with the Kings. He had 12 goals and 65 points in 136 career games in LA last season. His nine goals were tied with Drew Doughty and Matt Roy for the team lead amongst defensemen. And his 29 assists were second among defensemen, sixth on the team overall. Now, I believe if you give Brant Clark or Jordan Spence the same number of games and the ice time that Sean Dursey got, I think they're going to give you about the same production. Uh, clearly, the Kings believe that as well, or they would not have made this trade. We'll see how it turns out. But again, right now, I am fully on board with this deal. I think it's exactly what the Kings needed to do for a multitude of reasons. And again, this does clear the way, I believe, for Brant Clark to be playing on that third pairing for the LA Kings come the start of the season. If not, maybe it's Jordan Spence gets the first opportunity while Clark gets a little seasoning in the AHL and then Clark joins at some point in the season. But again, two young, talented guys for the Kings ready to play a bigger role and they're going to get it, it looks like, next season for the Kings. So, so far, the Kings offseason, I think, has actually gone according to plan so far. Now, there were some priorities for the Kings. I think one of them was resigning defenseman Vladislav Gabrikov. Uh, of course, they traded away the contract of Cal Peterson. So those were two important moves to make to kind of set things up going forward. We talked about the Sean Dursey trade, another piece, another domino that has fallen this offseason for the Kings. So I, yeah, I think the Kings so far have had a very good offseason and things are going pretty much according to plan. But apparently the next move the Kings appear to be ready to make it's not what a lot of us expected. It's not what I expected. And we're going to get into the multiple reports over the weekend of the LA Kings, apparently on the verge of making a trade with the Winnipeg Jets for center Pierre-Luc Dubois. We're going to get into that on this episode of Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. But this episode of Locked on LA Kings is brought to you by eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure that every player is the perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay's guaranteed fit, you can be sure that every part you get fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to the My Garage and look for the green check mark to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game. When you shop at eBay Motors and over they have over 122 million parts to choose from, you will be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. So rumors have been flying all over social media this weekend about an impending trade between the Kings and the Winnipeg Jets. If you're not on social media, maybe this is the first you're hearing of it. Um, we've talked about it a little bit on this show that Pierre-Luc Dubois um, was apparently a target for the LA Kings. And uh, really things kicked up this weekend, not only because of the number of reports that were coming out, but from the reputable NHL insiders that were reporting it. Multiple people from The Athletic and you know guys like Pierre Lebrun, Darren Dreger, um, Elliot Friedman, Frank Cervelli, all these guys have had multiple reports talking about how a trade is in the works and there's a lot of talk going on. They didn't say anything was necessarily eminent, but again, there was just a ton of smoke around a deal between the Winnipeg Jets and the LA Kings and that you would think it would be like to be done by the time the draft comes up on Wednesday or at least with free agency starting on July the 1st, teams trying to get things sorted out so that they can make these moves in preparation for moves that are coming down the line. Now, we know Pierre-Luc Dubois would be the main piece coming to L.A. What's going out is unclear, and we're going to get more into that in just a moment. But let's focus for now on Pierre-Luc Dubois. He just turned 25 this past Saturday, um, but already has six NHL seasons of experience. Um, but if he were to come to L.A., this would be his third team over those six seasons. So why has a very talented player drafted third overall in 2016 and has been very productive 
Why is he apparently on the move so much? Well, we talked about this on a previous show. He's never been shy about how unhappy he is, or maybe to be more fair, where he would like to be. Now, he was drafted by Columbus, but didn't want to play there, traded to Winnipeg in the Patrick Line deal, and has made it very clear he has no intention to re-sign when his contract is up with the Winnipeg Jets. He is a restricted free agent at the moment. Now, Pierre-Luc Dubois is from Quebec, and he has always talked about his desire to play in Montreal. Now, does he really want to be an L.A. King? Well, you can be sure the Kings are going to get that question answered before they make a trade for Pierre-Luc Dubois. Uh, if he comes to L.A., then you could argue that that is him proving he wants to be here. Um, but if he does come to L.A., it would be in a sign-and-trade deal. In other words, the Kings and Dubois would agree on the parameters of a deal. The Blue Jackets would then sign him to that deal and then trade him to Los Angeles. Now, if that happens, again, you can make the argument that if Pierre-Luc Dubois is agreeing on a deal and a sign and trade to come to L.A., then, well, he must want to be a king. Well, yes and no. Uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois might agree to sign, uh, but that's because he wants the contract. Uh, he could still ultimately be looking uh, to get to Montreal at some point. Now, again, you could argue that if you're Pierre-Luc Dubois, you know, why not? If you really want to go to Montreal, if that's your end game, why not just play out your contract, become an unrestricted free agent, and sign wherever you want? Um, well, as an old TV executive once said, a great quote that I always remember, his name was Don Olmeyer. I think he was the head of NBC Sports. He said, quote, the answer to all your questions is money. Um, sure, Pierre-Luc Dubois would love to play home in Montreal, but he also wants to get paid. And bottom line, if the Kings can offer him a better deal than he can get in Montreal, then that's where he's going to want to go, and he'll come to L.A. Money always talks. But again, it doesn't guarantee he'll be happy in L.A. If this trade does happen, I'll be very curious to hear what his comments are about coming to Los Angeles. I mean, there have been players in other sports that have always talked about a desire to be closer to home. We saw in the NHL this offseason a big trade involving the Calgary Flames and the Columbus Blue Jackets that sent Johnny Gaudreau to Columbus in part because he wanted to be closer to home. Now, he's from New Jersey, uh, but then again, it was you know during COVID, uh, there was a border situation. He couldn't come over to see his family. And anyway, it, 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 obviously Columbus is closer to New Jersey than Calgary is. So again, there, you, you, that does play into it sometimes, players wanting to be closer to home. Uh, and I get that. But in the end, just like with Johnny Gaudreau, his, his, apparently his best deal wasn't in New Jersey. Uh, it was in Columbus, and that's where he went. And so perhaps that's, that's the case with Pierre-Luc Dubois as well. Maybe coming to a bigger market for a team that has, uh, you know, bigger aspirations. That's apparently a team on the rise or Winnipeg, even though they were a playoff team last year is a team that's looking to rebuild. Maybe all that factors into him actually wanting to play for the LA Kings. And we were reminded by friend of the show, Russell Morgan last week, that Pierre-Luc Dubois agent is Pat Brisson. Uh, now he does have a strong friendship. Does Brisson with Kings president, Luke Robitaille. And Pat Brisson is also the agent for Andre Kopitar, so it appears he has a good relationship with the LA Kings organization, and that doesn't hurt in any kind of negotiation. Now, as much as I have been unenthusiastic about a deal for Pierre-Luc Dubois, because as I've said, I really want guys to play for the LA Kings who want to be LA Kings, and I'm not totally sure that's the case with Pierre-Luc Dubois, I do have to admit that if he has been disgruntled or unhappy in Columbus and Winnipeg, to his credit, it hasn't shown in any kind of lack of production. Uh, three times in his six NHL seasons, he's been a near 30 goal scorer, and three times in his NHL career, he scored 60 or more points, including the last two seasons with Winnipeg, where he had 28 and then 27 goals and 60 and 63 points. Now, Pierre-Luc Dubois is a very talented player. I've never had an issue with his talent. Just maybe his attitude is a little bit concerning. Um, but his if he does join the LA Kings, that would give them a hell of a presence down the middle with Andre Kopitar and Philip Deneau. It would give LA one of the top trio of centers in the NHL. It would also give the Kings a young center to possibly build around going forward. 
uh, to take over maybe for Andre Kopitar uh, and maybe be a, bit, be a bit of an insurance policy if Quinton Byfield doesn't turn out to be the player that many hope that he will be. Um, if it does actually happen, uh, I would say it's a, it's a bit of a bold move that I did not see coming from Kings GM Rob Blake. Uh, I think he's thinking a bit outside the box again by even pursuing this deal and at, at least uh, getting some very serious discussions going on. When you looked at the needs for the LA Kings, we talked about re-signing Gavrikov or getting another left shot defense to solidify that second pairing. We talked about trying to get out from under the contract of, of Cal Peterson. We talked about a possible Sean Dursey trade. So dominoes have fallen that we saw coming, or at least a lot of us did. This one, though, would be something we didn't see coming. I did not see the Kings looking to make a big move to acquire another center to really solidify, solidify things down the middle now and, and for the near future as well. Um, so that would be a bold move for the Kings and something that could certainly help them going forward. So what will the Kings be giving up to bring in a Pierre-Luc Dubois? That is next on this episode of Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. I do want to invite you, though, to check out Locked On 2023 NHL Mock Draft Special. Uh, local hosts from the Locked On NHL channels have made their picks over the entire first round of the NHL draft. And NHL scout uh, Heidi Kalachi, who will be our guest on our Wednesday show, will be breaking down every selection of the first round with this Mock Draft Special. Uh, it's three shows three separate shows, and they break down the entire first round of the draft, and all three shows are available now. So check that out if you're interested in the NHL draft before Wednesday's first round. It's available for free on Locked On NHL's YouTube channel and your favorite podcast as well. Check out that 2023 Locked On NHL Mock Draft Special. So with the LA Kings seemingly on the verge of trading for Jets center Pierre-Luc Dubois, what will the Kings be giving up? Obviously, you have to give to get. And there are reports that Gabe Velarde and Alex Ayafalo are involved. That would be losing, obviously, two solid pieces, but they're not irreplaceable pieces. Uh, as much as I like Alex Ayafalo, um, he is more of a, a third-line guy. He's 29 years old. It gives you 15 goals and 35 points a season, and that's not bad. But you can't find those guys elsewhere. Gabe Velarde is the tricky one. He finally had a breakout season this past year, and he could be on the cusp of being an emerging star after being a first-round pick of the Kings in 2017. He posted career highs with 23 goals and 41 points. And that said... Although he seems to be trending in the right direction, there have been some injury issues with him in the past. And I do think the Kings have indicated that they would like to see another season from Gabe Velarde where he stays healthy and he puts up similar numbers before they would commit to him long-term. Now, he is a restricted free agent this season with arbitration rights. So could Gabe Velarde turn into a better player ultimately, than Pierre-Luc Dubois. Possible, but right now, Pierre-Luc Dubois is just over a year older than Velarde, and he's already had six solid NHL seasons compared to Gabe Velarde's one. Now, Pierre-Luc Dubois is, is much more of a proven player at this point. He's been consistent in his production. As we said, 30 goals, 60 points per season. Velarde is going to have to keep improving to become that guy or better. Is he going to stay healthy? I, I would have to say, looking at it right now, as, as I'm sure many fans would not want to see Gabe Velarde go, I certainly understand that. But if you're looking at the players right now, player for player, Pierre-Luc Dubois is a better player than Gabe Velarde. He's a more proven commodity than Gabe Velarde. There's no guarantee Gabe Velarde is going to continue to get better, and there's no guarantee that he's going to continue to stay healthy. Now, you could say the same thing about Pierre-Luc Dubois, but when you're judging these things, you do take history into consideration. Now, I another another great quote, uh, a sports broadcaster said to me once that uh, st you know, statistics are what has happened, not what will happen. 
And that's true, but it also is a pretty good indicator of what will happen. And again, Pierre-Luc Dubois has been healthy. He's put in multiple solid NHL seasons. His numbers right now, his best numbers are better than Gabe Velarde's best numbers. So you're, ba- and again, they're about the same age. Uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois is only about a year and a few months older than Gabe Velarde, and he's a more proven product. So the argument against trading away Gabe Velarde is that he's going to turn into something better. Um, he's going to be a 40 goal scorer. He's going to be a 70 point player. I'm not sure that I have a ton of faith that that's going to happen. It could happen, but is it likely to happen? I, I would say that's being pretty optimistic. I like Gabe Velarde as a player. If it turns out that this deal doesn't happen and he comes back to the Kings, uh, I'll be happy about that because I like him as a player. But if you can get a Pierre-Luc Dubois and the price is basically giving up a Gabe Velarde, and again, we'll still have to wait and see if this happens, what the full details are. But those would be the two major pieces in play, and I would be willing to pay that price if that is the case. Now, another little wrinkle in this is Quentin Byfield's name has come up. And I know some will say, oh, Velarde is a better player than Byfield. Keep Velarde and trade Byfield if you can. If that's an option, let's do that. And they're not wrong at the moment. Clearly, Gabe Velarde right now is a more productive NHL player than Quentin Byfield. But you also have to consider what is the player going to become? Remember, what was Gabe Velarde when he was 20 years old? which is what Quentin Byfield's age is. Uh, He had not established himself in any way as an NHL player. And there were a lot of people that were thinking he was not trending in the right direction with the injuries and things we talked about at this point. So when you think about Quentin Byfield, what is he going to become in three or four years when he is the same age as Gabe Velarde? I know some have speculated that the interest in Pierre-Luc Dubois could be an indication that the Kings organization isn't as sold on Byfield In terms of him being a future number one center, if you go out and get a Pierre-Luc Dubois, then possibly he's the guy to take over for an Andre Kopitar later down the line. And that's possible, but I don't know that I'm particularly buying into that. I think the Kings still believe that Quentin Byfield is going to develop into a a top pairing center or certainly somebody in your top six at center. I'd be pretty shocked if Quentin Byfield was included in a trade to get Pierre-Luc Dubois. Um, We'll certainly see how it plays out. Um, But like I said, if that were to happen, that would be pretty surprising to me. And I know the impatience of a lot of Kings fans when it comes to Quentin Byfield. But as we said, and look, you may turn out to be right in the end, but at this point, I I think the upside is still too much there to give up on Quentin Byfield at this point. Yeah, it may take a little longer than we all want it to, But I think when you invest the second overall pick in a guy and he's 20 years old and he's just kind of scratching the surface of things, I think you got to give him more time to develop. So uh, again, then his name has come up and there have been some questions about maybe if looking to get another center is an indictment, so to speak, at this point of Quentin Byfield. I don't think that's the case, but it has come up. I will be very surprised if Quentin Byfield is involved in any kind of a trade for Pierre-Luc Dubois, but we shall see. This is still a very much a developing story and things can change as the negotiations go on, but we'll see. Right now, again, the major pieces have been Pierre-Luc Dubois to LA for Alex Iafalo and Gabe Velarde and what other pieces could be involved around that. Maybe more pieces coming back to the LA Kings as well. I know, uh, was it Jansen Harkins has been mentioned again. He's a He's a player that was a, a high pick for the Jets and hasn't been able to kind of crack their lineup yet. Maybe he's involved as well, but we shall wait and see. But uh, again, there is a ton of smoke coming out of Winnipeg. Will there be a fire <laughs> sparked here in the next day or so? Obviously, we'll talk all about it uh, coming up on our future episodes of Locked on LA Kings. We'll get more into that in a second, what's coming up this week on the show. I did want to quickly mention that the LA Kings did announce their preseason schedule For the upcoming season, as I'm sure you're probably aware, the Kings are going to start off their preseason with two games in Melbourne, Australia. That'll be coming up on Friday, September 22nd, and Saturday, September 23rd, uh, LA time. Uh, Those dates actually are different in Australia. They're actually like a day ahead of us. But anyway, for us, which is what matters, if you're in Los Angeles, that is, or in North America, uh, Friday, September 22nd, Saturday, September 23rd, Kings versus Coyotes and Sean Dursey. 
uh, in Australia. So I guess Dursey will still get to go to Australia if he was looking forward to that. Uh, then you've got Sunday, September 24th. Uh, the Kings are playing the Ducks in Anaheim. Uh, I got to assume those are players that won't be involved in the trip to Australia because that's a really quick turnaround. Uh, Wednesday, September 27th, the Kings will play in Vegas against the Golden Knights. Friday, September 29th, uh, Kings Ducks at uh, the Pachanga Arena in San Diego. Uh, Saturday, September the 30th, you've got Kings at San Jose. And then you've got a few, finally a few preseason home games for the Kings. Tuesday, October 3rd against the Ducks at Crypto.com Arena. Uh, Thursday, October 5th, Kings versus Sharks in Salt Lake City as the Kings play that annual game in Salt Lake City every year. And then finally, the last preseason game for the Kings, October 7th, Kings versus Vegas at Crypto.com Arena against the defending Stanley Cup champs. So we're already, we've got the uh, preseason schedule out. The uh, regular season schedule comes out within the next month or so. So looking forward to uh, to breaking that down and you know getting ready for preparations for the start of next season. Uh, we still got a long way to go. We got development camp coming up next week, and then rookie camp, and then training camp. But uh, time marches on, and uh, w- before you know it, we'll be ready for another King season. Who will be the pieces and the parts that make up the Kings team for next season? It's still developing, but it's been an interesting off season so far for sure, and it continues with the NHL draft coming up. On Wednesday, for you everydayers, those of you that listen and watch Locked on LA Kings every day, coming up for the rest of the week, we have a countdown to the NHL draft coming up. Wednesday, we'll be joined by Hadi uh, Karakash. He is a scout and draft analyst and the host of Locked on NHL Prospects. He's going to join us to talk about the NHL draft and what the Kings might be looking to do. Obviously, on Thursday, show a full recap of what the Kings will do. At, during the two days at the NHL draft, we'll tell you about the players they selected and as much as we know about them. And then, of course, on Friday show, it is our weekly Kings fan feedback show. Already so much to talk about this week, and the week is just getting started, and there could be much more to come. So looking forward to that Friday fan feedback show. If you want to send an email about anything that's happened already, about the Sean Dursey trade or any anything that comes up with the draft, the email address is lockedoneddie at gmail.com, E-D-D-I-E. Locked on Eddie at gmail.com. And if you want to post your comments uh, in the YouTube episodes in the comments section, that's always welcome as well. We'd love for you to stay connected with us uh, during uh, the off hours of the show. Uh, and if you follow us on Twitter, I've been keeping you up to date on all the rumors and all the reports that have been going on with Pierre Luc Dubois. Told you about the Sean Dursey trade right after it happened, so on and so forth. Uh, we're on Twitter and Instagram at Locked on LA Kings. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this episode of Locked on LA Kings. I'm Eddie Garcia. Have a great day. We will talk to you tomorrow. And as always, go Kings go.